द कंप्लीट वर्क ऑफ स्वामी विवेकानंद द वेदांता लेक्चर डिलीवर्ड बाय स्वामी विवेकानंद एट लाहौर इन 1897 पार्ट सेवन अगेन द बुद्धिस्ट विल स्टैंड अप एंड डिक्लेयर नॉट ओनली इज इट इन लॉजिकल बट ऑल्सो इम मॉरल फॉर इट टीच इज मैन टू बी अ कावर्ड एंड टू सीक असिस्टेंस आउटसाइड एंड नो बडी कैन गिव हिम सच हेल्प हियर इज अ यूनिवर्स man made it why then depend upon an imaginary being outside whom nobody ever saw or felt or got help from why then do you make cowards of yourselves and teach your children of yours that the highest state of man is to be like a dog and go crawling before this imaginary being saying that you are weak and impure and that are you are everything while in this universe on the other hand the buddhist may urge not only that you tell a lie but that you bring out a tremendous amount of evil upon your children and mark you this world is one of hypnotization whatever you tell yourself that you become almost the first words the great buddha uttered were what you think that you are what you will think that you will be if this is true do not teach yourself that you are nothing i that you cannot do anything unless you are helped by somebody who does not live here but sits above the clouds the result will be that you will be more and more weakened every day by constantly repeating we are very impure lord make us pure the result will be that you will hypnotize yourself to all sorts of vices the buddhists say that 90% of these vices that you see in every society are on account of this idea of a personal god this is an awful idea of the human being that the end and the aim of his expression of life this wonderful expression of life is to become like a dog says the buddhist to the vaishnav if your ideal your aim and your goal is to go to the place called vaikunt where god lives and there stand before him with folded hands all through eternity it is better to commit suicide than do that the buddhist may even urge that they, that why is he going to create annihilation nirvana to escape this i am putting these ideas before you as a buddhist just for the time being because nowadays all these advaitic ideas are said to make you immortal and i am trying to tell you how the other side looks let us face both sides boldly and bravely we have seen first of all that this cannot be proved this idea of a personal god creating the world is there any child that can believe this today because a kumkarna creates a ghata therefore a god created the world if this is so then your kumkara is a god also and if anyone tells you that he acts without heads and our hands you may tell him to go to a lunatic asylum has ever, ever your personal god the creator of the world to whom you cry all your life help you is the next challenge from modern science they will prove that any help you've had could have been got by your own exertions and better still you need not have spent your energy in that crying you could have done it better without that weeping and crying and we have seen that along with this idea of a personal god comes tyranny and priest craft tyranny and priest craft have prevailed wherever this idea existed and until the lie is knocked on the head say the buddhist tyranny will not cease so long as a man thinks he has to cower before a supernatural being so long there will be priests to claim rights and privileges and to make men cower before them 
while these poor men will continue to ask some priest to act as interceder before them. You may do away with the Brahmin, but mark me, those who do so will put themselves in a place and that will be worse because the Brahmin has a certain amount of generosity in him. But these upstarts are always the worst of tyrannizers. If a beggar gets wealth, he thinks the whole world is a bit of straw. So these priests must be. So long as this personal God idea exists, and it will be impossible to think of any great morality in society. Priestcraft and tyranny go hand in hand. Why was it invented? Because some strong men in olden times got people into their hands and said, you must obey us or we will destroy you. That was the long and short of all. It is the idea that the thunderer who kills everyone who does not obey him. Next, the Buddhist says, You have been perfectly rational up to this point, that everything is a result of the law of karma. You believe in the in infinity of souls, and that souls are without birth or death. And this infinity of souls and the belief in the law of the karma are perfectly logical, no doubt. There cannot be a cause without an effect. The present must have had its cause in the past and will have its effect in the future. The Hindu says that the karm is a jad, inert and not chaitanya spirit. Therefore, some chaitanya is necessary to bring this cause into fruition. It is so that chaitanya is necessary to bring the plant to fruition. If I plant the seed and add water, no chaitanya is necessary. You may say that there was some original chaitanya there, but the souls themselves were the chaitanya. Nothing else is necessary. If human souls have it too, what necessity is there for a god? As say the Jains, who unlike the Buddhists believe in souls and do not believe in God. Where are you logical? Where are you moral? And when you criticize Advaitism and fear that it will make for immorality, just read a little bit of what has been done in India by the dualist sects. If there have been 20,000 Advaitist black gods, there have also been 20,000 Dvaitist black gods. Generally speaking, there will be no Dvaitist blackguards because it takes a better type of mind to understand a Dvaitism and a Dvaitist can scarcely be frightened into anything. What remains for you, Hindus, then? There is no help for you out of the clutches of the Buddhists. You may quote the Vedas, but he does not believe in them. He will say, my Tripitikas say otherwise. And they are without beginning or end, not ever even written by Buddha. For Buddha says, he is only reciting them. They are eternal. And he adds, yours are wrong. Ours are the true Vedas. Yours are manufactured by black gods. Because it takes a better type of mind to understand Advaitism. And Advaitis can scarcely be frightened into anything. What remains for you, Hindus, then? How do you escape?